Hi everyone and welcome back to Learning to Code with Make Code Arcade. My name is Corey. So well done on all your work in our last tutorial in our last episode and today we're actually going to just continue on building that game. So what I'm going to do is I am going to hop into browser. Remember the website that we're using is arcade.makecode.com so arcade.makecode.com and although my game is still here I'm actually going to show you how you can import your game. OK, so maybe it didn't save or maybe um, you're in private browser, so it didn't save. So I'm going to click on this import button. And you're going to import a file. And choose the file. And mine is on my desktop and it is called Arcade Teacher Package and go ahead. And as I said, it is a PNG, but it does upload as a code file. And let me just get rid of this. And here we go. So we're back into the game that we had last week. So last week, um, or in our last episode, your home challenge was to make Nemo move in all directions. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how you can do that. So you needed four of these C-shaped blocks, as I call them, the orange blocks. So we needed one for left. We needed one for right. We needed one for up. And we needed one for down. And I can click here. Now, in each one of these C shaped blocks, we need a change Nemo. So let's go into sprites and let's change my sprite X by zero. And I'm going to bring this into the right button. Now, is right on the X axis? Yes, it is. And it's going to just be 10. We don't have to put in plus 10, we can just put in 10. I need another one of these blocks, so I'm going to go back into sprites and I'm going to change my sprite. This time I need to be careful because up is actually on the Y axis, so I press the little arrow and I go Y. And I'm just going to say um, 10. Let's just go with 10 and let's see if it works. Do, 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 do. No, OK, it doesn't. And the reason for that is, is in game design, the Y axis is actually inverted, which means that it's the opposite way around to what you would learn in maths. OK, and um, you probably know this if you play a lot of video games. So in gaming to go up, we actually go into minus numbers. OK, and that's because it's inverted. It's the opposite way around. So let me just test this. Perfect. It's working and Nemo's going to stay in the screen because he wrote that code the last time. So I'm actually just going to duplicate this. So I right clicked on my mouse to duplicate or if you're using a tablet you can just press and hold and duplicate Oop. and this time it's going to be 10 so plus 10 to go down and that works woohoo okay so now we have Nemo going in all directions okay so well done everyone on that so what we want to do now is we want to make this game interesting okay because we have Nemo and we have our effects and stuff but like what's the point of the game so what I have envisioned for this game is that Nemo is obviously the player and Nemo is trying to catch something. So maybe it's like seaweed or some type of food. OK, and the more that Nemo catches that, the more points Nemo gets. But that wouldn't be really that much of a challenging game because you're just getting loads and loads of points. So let's introduce an enemy or a shark. OK, that's going to try catch Nemo. So if it catches Nemo, Nemo is going to actually lose a life. So that's the basis of my game. So before I actually, you know, jumped into arcade um, in our episode, in our last episode, I actually wrote down a piece of paper and I was like, OK, what do I want this game to look like? And that's important. So as I said, we're going to need some type of enemy. So I'm going to just move these out of the way for now. And I am going to go into sprites and I'm going to just set a new sprite. And as I said, this is going to be my enemy. So what I need to do here now is in my variables, I need to press my arrow and really carefully here, because sometimes this can happen. If I rename this variable, it's just going to rename the whole of Nemo. So that's not going to help. I actually need to create a new variable here because I'm creating a new sprite. And what is the shark's name? Bruce. I'm trying to think in like find a Nemo, what it's called. Bruce, I think. Um, and I'm going to, you can either go off and you can, Draw shark and um, down here you can actually change the size of the screen. So this is 16 by 16, but um, if you wanted it, let's say 
20 by 16, it makes it a little bit longer. So if you're drawing a shark and it's lengthways, that would help you. I'm going to go 16 by 16. I'm actually not going to draw the shark. Um, I'm going to use my good old reliable gallery here. And I am going to scroll down until I, ah, there's loads of sharks. I go with this one. And press done. And there we go. OK, there's my shark. Now, very, very important here. Your kinds of sprites is literally so important because that is going to differentiate of what your sprites are in the game. We said that we want the shark to be an enemy. So let's make it an enemy. Click on your arrow and click enemy. Now. I have a problem, OK, um, and that is that in a, if this was my game, like and the second it starts, look when I restart it, the, the millisecond it starts, the shark's already on top of Nemo. So like game over, do you know what I mean? So what we want to do is we want to actually reset the position of the shark. OK, so let's go into sprites and let's set my sprites position to X, Y. And bring it in under your on start menu. Whose position are we setting? Bruce's. So change it to Bruce. Very important. And then position on X and Y. So on the X axis, I'm going to say 21 looks good. And on the Y axis, if I bring it down where the two lines meet, where they intersect there, I'm just going to say 21 and 22. That's a good starting point, I think, because that actually gives me time to run away. <laughs> so. There is actually a line of code that will that will make the shark follow Nemo around the screen. So at the moment when I move, the shark's not moving anywhere, right? So if I go into sprites. Here you can see set my enemy to follow my sprite. So let's take out this block of code and let's put it in our on start menu. Now, don't forget you can pause me at any stage. So anytime I watch tutorials, what I'll do is I'll I'll listen to a bit and I'll pause it and then I'll do it um, and then I'll unpause and continue. So remember, you can you can pause it at any stage. Now, there's my triangle with the error. So the error sign and it's saying, yeah, Corey, you have nothing called my enemy. So if I click on the arrow and change it to Bruce, it says Bruce follow Nemo. Right. And let's see what happens now. OK, perfect. But I didn't even get look how fast Bruce is following me. So. This plus button here will allow me to change the speed of the shark. OK, so I usually go for 40, give myself a nice break. Still quite fast, though, in fairness. So not as fast, but, you know, still tough going. So you can go with whatever you want there, play around with a few numbers, see what works for you. Um, and then I'm happy out like that's I'm happy with that. That's that's the shark. OK, but what I want to do now is I want to create an overlap. OK, so there the sharks that are catching up with me. So technically I should lose a life. OK, so that's called a collision or an overlap in Arcade. So what we want to do is click into sprites. And at the very. Bottom there, you'll see the word overlaps. And as you can see, it is a huge line of code. It's a huge C shaped block. So let's bring this out. And sometimes it can look very overwhelming, right? But let's not look too much into it. What I tend to do at the start when you're only learning the basic game is don't worry about the red. Ignore the red. OK, player overlaps player. No, if the player overlaps with the enemy, right? So if if the shark touches Nemo. We're going to go into info. And we are going to, 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 to change life by minus one. Now, automatically, right, Arcade gives you three lives. So if I bring this in and play my game, it's going to give me three lives, but there's going to be a slight problem. It's telling me I only lost one life, but like I, the game was over straight away. OK, and there's a reason for that. And that's because when the shark overlaps with me, I don't even have a millisecond to get away because they're 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 still overlapping with me. So there's a way around this. OK, there's a way that we can we can make this a little bit easier on ourselves. And that's simply by just making the shark go back to its original position. OK, because if you think about it, OK, Grant, the shark's starting up there and then when it overlaps with me. 
I'm not getting the opportunity to keep trying. Okay, so we've written the shark's position before. Set Bruce. So just duplicate that and bring it into your overlap block. Okay. And now it might make more sense. You're probably, you probably might still be like, what? How would that make a difference? But see, every time the shark overlaps at me, it's going back to its original position and I'm getting those three lives. Now, if you if you want more than three lives, you can have more than three lives. It's your game. OK, so you literally will just go into info and see set life. Bring that into your on start menu and change it to 10 or 100 if you want. OK, that's completely up to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at three. OK. Now. The next thing I want to do is actually create food. So at the moment I, I can't get anything. OK, the shark's just getting me. I'm just trying to get away from the shark. So we want to create a food kind of sprite. So like before, like we did with Nemo, like we did with Bruce, let's go into sprites and let's set my sprite and let's bring that into our on start menu. OK, remembering that you can pause me at any stage. Again, it's a new sprite. So let's create a new variable and let's call it seaweed. Ooh, very creative name. I'm sure you will come up with better. And click in my gray square like always. I can draw seaweed, but I did spot some seaweed in the actual gallery. There we go. I'm going to go with the smallest one and press done. And most importantly, like always, it needs to be the right kind. So it needs to be of kind food. And that's important because of our overlaps. Remember. We needed to make sure that our sprites of kinds were the correct kinds so that when we overlap, we can use these buttons here. OK. OK, so set seaweed to be this and it's a food. So there we go. There's our seaweed. Now. With the seaweed, what I want to happen is I don't know if you ever played snake before, but remember like the, the field would just be randomly around the screen and you'd have to go around and try find it. And after a couple of seconds, it would move and you'd have to try find it again. So we're literally just going to create that code OK, and how we do that is with our game category. So in game. We have on game update and on game update every certain amount of seconds. So on game update means every single millisecond, like every single frame of this game, it's going to check for an update. That's way too much. OK, so what we can do is on game update every and we can pick the amount of seconds we want. So I'm going to say every two seconds, I think is that's OK. That gives us enough time to actually get around the screen and catch it. And um, so on game update every two seconds, I want this seaweed to be somewhere in the screen. OK, so let's go into sprites. And let's set our sprites position and we've done this before. Which sprite is it that we want randomly around the screen? Well, it's the seaweed. And I don't want to just give it a position on X and why because that means every two seconds it's going to just be in the same position. There is a way to randomly do it though. So we can search random, but I know it's in maths. So I'm going to go into math because that's usually where you see random numbers. And pick random zero to ten. Now watch closely how I'm putting this in here. So pick random zero to ten. It goes into X. And it goes into Y, OK? So you're going to need two of these. And there we go. Now. X from 0 to 10 and Y from 0 to 10. Our screen is actually much bigger than that. OK, so our screen, the width of it is 160 and the height of it is 120. So the width is going to cross. So that's going to be our X axis and that's 0. To 160. And our Y axis is going down. And that's zero to 120. OK, so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can pause if you want and make sure that you have this line of code and um, correct. And then we're just going to test our code. So let's pr press play. Oh, I should move. I forgot that the shark takes away lives in the far. Ah. OK, the seaweed is going around the screen and I'm trying to catch it. And when I catch it, nothing's happening. OK, so that's not great. So we've used overlaps before, so let's do it again. This time we want to say if the player overlaps with the food, well, we're going to get a score. OK, 
So I'm going to go back into sprites. I'm going to scroll down until I see on sprite of kind player overlaps with other sprite of kind player. And let me just zoom back in here so you can see. Again, ignore the red for now. Player overlaps food. That's why it's so important to make sure your sprites are the correct kind when you're creating them, okay? I want to change my score by one. Now you can change the score by 100 if you want. It's, it's your game, okay? But I'm just gonna change the score by one. And let's see what happens. Let's play this game. Okay, where are you seaweed? There you are. Ah! Okay, 21 points. Oh, 23. That's really good, but it's a problem, okay? <laughs> because I shouldn't be allowed just sit on that seaweed for the two seconds that it's there. Because first of all, it's not a very fun game, then I can just sit there, okay? Um, so what I want to do is the same that I've done with the shark, okay? I want to say that when I actually overlap with the food, get a score, and then the food has to go back to somewhere new, right? And we have that code. We've done it. We've created it, okay? So it's in your on-game update every 2,000 milliseconds, which is two seconds. Um, duplicate it and put it in your overlap block. Let me put it, is it? Yeah, okay. And now let's play the game. Now, that's much better, okay? So when I overlap with it, it's it's going to a new location, okay? Doesn't matter if it's two seconds or not, three. Okay, so that's a much more challenging game. It's more interactive then, because you have to try harder. Um, so that's really the game in the nutshell, okay? that's you, You're after covering so much there. I am going to do a, a little bit more, but just to reiterate what we've learned, okay? We've learned how to create different types of sprites. So we know how to create a player, we know how to create an enemy, and we know how to create a food. We know how to set sprites positions. We know how to randomly move them around the screen. We know how to move our player along the X and Y axis. And we know how to use overlaps. And overlaps are like the most interactive part of the game, I think. Now, some fun that I like to do is, I know anyway, when I play any type of video game, when I overlap with something, whether it's good or bad, like I hear a sound, like I hear some type of music. So what you can do is you can pop into music and you can say play sound bidding. And again, it has an arrow. So I'm going to click into here. And um, you probably won't be able to hear my music, but sure you can test this out on your own device and um, without being interrupted by my music. So when they overlap with the enemy, I'm going to do like a siren. And then I'm going to duplicate this code. And when they overlap with the food, I'm going to do like a magic wand sound. So let me just play this now. I know you probably won't be able to hear, but I just want to make sure it works. Oh, I have it muted, so I can't even hear. Ooh. Did I even get any points that time? No. <laughs> anyway, that is the end of our first game. OK, and that's just a basic introduction of what you can do with Make Code Arcade. Now, later on in the um, episodes and as the weeks progress, we are going to be introducing um, different concepts like tile maps and um, animations and stuff. But for now, that is a lot. So well done, everyone, on following this code. I'm going to just minimize it for a second so you can see if there's anything else there that you want to pause and catch up on, you can. And that's everything. So well done, everyone. I will see you next time um, for when we're going to actually start a new game. Bye.